All right, welcome back to Focal Point. Brian Fisher is my name. Now, you got to be careful here because this is being pitched as a boon to big insurance, and it is. This is a favor to big insurance, but realize the purpose of this is to limit the impact on your health insurance premiums. If these caps go into place, your premiums go through the roof. So this is more about them getting reelected in 2014 than anything else. Uh, they don't want your insurance premiums to go through the roof because of these caps until after they get reelected in 2014. Hang on a second. Had to plug myself back in. So that's what this is all about. It's just a naked move to try to preserve their diminishing electoral chances in 2014. Now, um, on George Stephanopoulos' program on Sunday, this is clip five, you had George Will on there with Louis Gohmert. Now, Louis Gohmert is one of those take-no-prisoners heroes of mine on Capitol Hill. George Will, is he's a smart guy. Uh, he's an odd conservative because he's an atheist, and he admits that he's an atheist. doesn't even believe in God, but he's a conservative. But he tends to be an establishment uh, guy. And so George Will and Louis Gohmert are on the are on opposite sides of this defund Obamacare thing and, and realize that what we have to keep in mind and we have to keep telling people, if the Senate and the House, if they offer to President Obama or the House offers to the Senate a continuing resolution that funds every part of the government except for Obamacare, and that's not good enough for the Democrats, that's not good enough for Barack Obama, who is shutting down the government. It will be the Democrats that are shutting down the government. It will be Barack Obama that's shutting down the government, all in order to protect this monstrosity of a health care bill that nobody in America likes. Uh, so that's what we got to keep in mind. That's what Carl Rove was just, he's afraid that rock's going to roll right back down the hill on top of the Republicans, that they're going to get blamed for the shutdown. That's why we got to be saying right now, every day, every time it comes up, it will be Obama that shuts the government down, not the Republicans. The Republicans are going to offer a continuing resolution that will fund every last piece of the federal government except for the implementation of Obamacare. Every other one of their precious programs will continue to get funded under this continuing resolution. The only thing that doesn't is the implementation of Obamacare. Jeff, why don't we grab that clip while I'm thinking about it, speaking of all of the other precious programs that the, the left has. Let's get the audio clip. Uh, this is... Um, a food stamp surfer, this is going to drive you crazy. This has got nothing to do with race. I mean, welfare has got nothing to do with race. This guy's as white bread as you can get. He's 29 years old. All he does all day is surf. Uh, and part of the deal here, and he's collecting uh, welfare. He's living off of food stamps. He's buying lobster. He's buying steak using food stamps and surfing. And he's kind of bunking down with girlfriends and buddies and all that kind of stuff. He's 29. He's obviously a reasonably intelligent guy, did, did some time in college, went to San Diego State. But welfare has completely robbed this guy of character, self-reliance, and initiative. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why we should hate welfare, government-run health care. Private charity doesn't do this because private charity will insist that you work in order to get help or that you take steps to improve your situation. Private charity is not just going to keep being a gravy train for you to subsidize irresponsible choices. They won't do it. You know, you, you set up to help somebody with, with your own resources in your own time. If they start making one terrible choice after another and they show no interest in responding to your help, eventually you're going to get to a point where you can say, look, th this is, it's a waste of, of my resources to try to help this individual because they're not interested in getting better. They're not interested in making wise choices. And so you begin to ratchet back on your help for the sake of the person you're trying to help because you can see that just by throwing good money after bad, you're simply enabling this person to continue to make self-destructive lifestyle choices. So you look at what you listen to this guy. This is this is terrible. This is horrible what welfare has done to this guy's initiative. And I'm, I'm blam not blaming the government for it because he's, he's responsible to make these choices himself. But what I am saying is that government welfare preys on human weaknesses. Rather than appealing to what is best in our humanity, it appeals to what is worst in our humanity, our laziness, our willingness to be dependent upon the hard work of others. It appeals to those things. It plays on those things. 
It preys on those things, and therefore it weakens, damages, and destroys character. So let's listen to this uh, surfer dude, uh, uh, a special that Fox News did the other day. So you fill out a form for a SNAP card, they give you that for a year, no questions asked. Yeah, you get to go, you're golden. It's $200 a month, right? Yeah, $200, free money. It's radical. Why not? So it's off to the gourmet section of the local food mart. I got my rainbow roll. We got ahi, salmon, eel, yellowtail with rice and avocado. And then they had lobster on special. We got lobster and coconut water, two to hundred dollars a month, and you just go like, boom. Thank you for shopping with just us. Just like that. Please remove your bags. All paid for by our wonderful tax dollars. Is that typically the type of thing that you'll get on the snap card? Yeah, I'll usually get sushi, but make it my own way. But they didn't have any good fish. So I just got the pre-made stuff. Is it safe to say that this notion of holding down a steady job just is something that is not in your wheelhouse? That's not the direction I'm going right now. Oh, man. I mean, it's funny, but it's absolutely tragic. This guy is 29. Some of the best, most productive years of his life, he's completely... What you are listening to is a wasted human life. This has nothing to do with race. It has to do with government welfare, which produces a learned helplessness. This guy's perfectly capable of taking care of himself. He's perfectly capable of holding down a job. He doesn't have to because of government welfare. It has robbed him of everything that makes him a man. He's turned into a useless sponge, and government welfare has made all that possible. Now, anyway, back to clip number five, George Will Louis Gohmert. Uh, and Louis Gohmert says, look, we need to defund Obamacare. If the, if the Democrats want to shut down government, that's their business. What we're about is trying to do what's right for the country. So they get into this exchange, George Will, Louis Gohmert, George Stephanopoulos, and Stephanopoulos asking what's going to happen here if you guys proceed with this plan. Let's listen. Well, I, I don't know, but I do think that uh, even though we're one half of the legislating body that from which no spending occurs unless we agree, that... That is a position that, that allows us to force others to adhere to the Constitution. We don't have to wait for the Supreme Court. We can force that. And we can say, you're going to abide by the Constitution, whether the Supreme Court gets it wrong or right. We have the ability to force respect for the law. And some of us think that we ought to force them to do that. Do you think and, you have the votes to defund Obamacare? It doesn't appear like that no, today. Not right now, but we'll see after August, after people go home. And it, as far as Obamacare, though, when the president himself says, it's not ready, so I'm giving this, this break to all big business, what about the poor guy out there making $14,000? He's going to pay extra income tax if he cannot afford to pay the several thousand dollars for an Obamacare policy. Who's caring about him? Well, a lot of us do, but it's not this president because he didn't let the individual mandate have a year off. He, he, that only goes to big business. That's not fair. So Louis Gohmert saying, hey, who's the one that's caring about the little guy? It is the Republicans that care about the little guy because Obamacare is killing the little guy and President Obama just doesn't care. All right, well, let's grab a couple of phone calls. Let's go to Eric Grove, Oklahoma. Uh, Eric, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Well, a whole lot, Brian, but say, uh, one, I, I, I want to disagree with you. I think the government is responsible. This is a side note regarding this 29-year-old uh, because they're enabling him to sin. The Bible says a man won't work, neither should he eat. But Absolutely. I agree with you, and, and, that, that's, and that, that's a government committing a sin. The Bible says a man will not work, neither let him eat. That guy shouldn't be given one single dime in welfare funds. And so you're, you're exactly right. That's a criminal act on the part of our government to do that to another human being. Amen. And they don't really care if they destroy lives. No, they don't. What I called about is this. <clears throat> we have a, uh, there's a, a, co a local congressman here uh, who I have followed his career from, from, from the start. He, he came in under the Tea Party Revolution. And now to make a, I'll try to make a long story short. Now he, he can, cannot stand the Tea Party. He finds, he can, can calls himself a, a conservative. He considers them to be extreme. And I listened to him today, this morning, on a local show being interviewed as to why he is opposed to, to the uh, plan put out there by Rubio and Rand and, and uh, Mike Lee and so forth. And, of course, it's the same old thing. Like you said, 
Well, you know, this is, could be devastating to the, to the Republican Party. We have a, a chance in 2014 to, to maybe take the uh, and get, grab the gavel back in the Senate. But if we do this, uh, just look at what happened uh, with uh, all you got to do if you want to know what will happen is look back with Newt, Newt uh, Gingrich in 95. And, one, I'd like you to, if you would, to please thoroughly go over what did happen. I was around then, but I don't remember all the details. But, two, why is it that so many of these people – uh, who can call themselves conservative Republicans, have a problem with the Tea Party when it was the Tea Party who helped to bring about uh, the, 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 the big uh, sh- uh, turnover in, in, uh, in the House in 2010. Well, you know, I mean, that's a $64,000 question right there. What happens to these guys? They call it Potomac fever. You cross the Potomac and you come down with some kind of tropical disease that erodes your values, it warps your brain so you're no longer thinking clearly, and it, 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 uh, it, it shreds your spine, destroys whatever spine you had when you went. So you got a, you got a politician here who got elected by, a li- by listening to the Tea Party. Now he wants to get reelected by listening to the Washington Post. I mean, this is crazy. It's the Washington Post that's out there saying this is going to kill the Republican Party. If they ever want to win the Senate, they've got a knuckle under under Obamacare. Like the Washington Post is concerned about the future of the Republican Party. Why any Republican would think that anything that the Washington Post would say about the Republican Party uh, on the assumption that the Washington Post cares about the future of the Republican Party, only wants the best for the Republican Party, only wants to see them flourish, only wants to see them prosper. So, again, I think, Eric, the, the, the bottom line is he cares more about what the Washington Post thinks and what you think, what his constituents think, and that's why he's going to have to be fought on this, and this is the month for constituents while he's back in his home turf. Look, let him know. We want you to defund Obamacare. You, We, we got you in office. I mean, and what probably got him into office, Eric, was campaigning against Obamacare. That's what happened in 2010, that landslide. That tsunami of Republicans coming into office, taking over the House, that happened because of Obamacare. He got where he's at, most likely, because he campaigned against Obamacare. Now he's turned into a surrender monkey on the very issue that got him uh, into office in the first place. So it's time for the folks to remind him. I mean, this is classic case. Citizen class Republicans like us, citizen class conservatives, against ruling class Republicans. Focal point, AFR Talk.